What's up guys, it's LK Anthony and welcome back to the RSX vlog that you hopefully know and hopefully continue to love because in today's video we are upgrading brakes and painting calipers. Let's jump into it. Alright guys and welcome back to another Acura RSX Type S vlog where this thing continues to get cleaner and cleaner with every video. Now I know in the last video I promised you guys that in this one I would be installing coilovers and obviously that's not happening. But it is going to be happening this weekend so by the time you're watching this it'll be the following weekend or something. I don't know what my schedule is, What? who am I kidding? It'll be up next after this for sure. But I had mentioned that I didn't want to install the coilovers until I got the brakes and rotors done on the car. So it's after hours, it's a work week. I got off at five, came home, got everything prepped, and I'm gonna be knocking this out for probably the next two nights. So tonight is gonna be all about basically cleaning and preparation for the caliper itself. So we're gonna be getting the caliper all sanded down, cleaned up, possibly taking off the rotor as well because the caliper paint does not come in till tomorrow. I ordered it off of Amazon and it is the, I believe, G2 caliper paint. It had some pretty good reviews, so I said, sure. Why not? But before we dive in on everything, I will be giving you a rundown of the new brake setup for the car and everything that I'll be using today. So let's head to the bench. All right, so here is tonight's delicious meal sitting on the table with all of the appetizers and everything in between. Now I realize some of you might point out that I'm not installing Brembo brakes on this car tonight and you would be correct. As much as I would love to do the Brembo upgrade down the road, uh, as of right now, I've just been dropping so much damn money on other things on this car that it wasn't a big priority, but I knew that I wanted to upgrade the brakes to some extent. So with that said, we have technically upgraded rotors here, and we also have upgraded pads. And once I paint those calipers, those are gonna be upgraded too, right? Because, well, that's how it works. So for the rotors themselves, these right here are centric blanks that were zinc coated as well as slotted by Rich over at Rotor Pros. He also did the black hub here and he does amazing work. He's done the set on the Evo here and he's also done several other sets for friends cars and he does just great work. I mean, seriously, for the price, you really can't beat it and his quality is fantastic. So again, slotted here, zinc coated, black hubs. Here are the fronts. Here are the rears right here. And one thing I wanna point out is going to be rotor orientation or the orientation of the slots. Now this is a whole debate online where people just say the slot should go this way, the slot should go this way, and I'm here just to kinda of lay down some facts. So when it comes to slotted rotors, the only defining thing that is going to say whether or not it should go this way or this way has nothing to do with the slots themselves but the splines within the rotor. So down in here, depending on how these are shaped, if they're at an angle or if they're straight, it's going to make a difference. So an angled spline here on the inside of the rotor needs to go towards the direction of air. So however the rotor is slotted, that is going to go towards the direction of air. Now on these right here, these are just straight splines. They're just straight through. There's no angle to them at all whatsoever, which means that you can put them in any orientation that you choose. Now most people opt to go this way. This is what most people do. However, I like to go this way. This is what I have on the Evo and I think it looks way more aggressive than going this way and it's just a personal preference thing. I, Im I imagine that some of you are probably going to start arguing in the comments and that's okay but I'm here to tell you it literally doesn't matter. It's a personal taste thing on whatever you think is going to look best and I'm going to go this way going uh, forward. So I think it's going to look pretty dang good. Now for the pads themselves, these are the StopTech Street Select pads that I also got from Rotor Pros and these are going to be a slight upgrade over an off the shelf O style pad that you would get from an auto parts store. So these are meant for daily driving, but can can take the occasional 
uh, trackies, whether it's an autocross day or maybe one track day, but they're by no means a track pad, but that's okay because this car is going to be mostly driven on the street and it's going to dust less, so I'm totally cool with that. So here are the pads for the front and rear, then we also have new caliper hardware down here in the bag. Now jumping over here, we just have kind of the essentials for getting everything cleaned up uh, before paint. So of course, we got brake parts cleaner, you definitely need that. I picked up a little wire wheel set just in case things get really nasty on the hubs, if everything's really rusted or anything like that. And then on top of that, I don't know, maybe use them on the calipers if there's any major crazy dirt, uh, but I also have some brushes here for more intricate areas. Now over here, I have some sandpaper just to also prep things. So I got a scuff pad as well as some 600 grit. And then jumping over here, I have new rotor screws. Now I'm not planning on stripping the rotor screws on the RSX, but shit happens. You never know, right? So I picked up some new ones. Um, prayers for me, right? I hope it all comes out fine. Uh, but for that, I got this little impact, um, I don't know what do you call this, uh, impact little Phillips thing here. Um, I've used it before. I had a Harbor Freight one for years. It took a crap. And so I ordered this one off of Amazon. Looks like nicer quality. So we'll give that a whack and see what happens. And then on top of that, we also have some synthetic brake grease. So anyways, guys, I'm not going to do a whole lot of talking from here on out. This is probably the majority of the talking that you're going to see. I might give a little bit of insight once it comes to the painting process, but for the most part, this is just going to be me getting this done and hopefully getting to the coilover video as soon as I possibly can. So enjoy the process. Let's get in there and get this thing done. So time for an update. So the progress so far, I went through on all four corners and unbolted the brake line brackets. And then after doing that, I broke free all four calipers on all four corners uh, using just a normal wrench. To my surprise, they actually broke free pretty easily, which I really wasn't expecting. So after doing that, I grabbed some brake cleaner and then sprayed things down pretty liberally. And then from there, I grabbed my wire brush and really began kind of just digging in there and cleaning things up. After that, I grabbed my 600 grit sandpaper, scuffed everything up, grabbed my scotch right pad, scuffed everything up, and anything that was really caked on there, I just grabbed the little wire drill brush there and just went through and kind of drilled out those areas. But then I grabbed some all-purpose cleaner, cut one-to-one, -one, so pretty strong, with a little brush there and went through and agitated everything just to loosen up a little bit more stuff. And so uh, at that point in time, I wouldn't say that they're necessarily clean or really prepped for paint just yet. I'm still gonna go through and clean some more stuff up, but uh, they were better than what they were. So, and then from there, I broke the caliper in half and hung it up on the strut there, trying not to pinch the lines, and then took the other bracket off and just set it aside. And that one used 17 millimeter bolts that were also 
relatively easy to remove. Anyway, I mean, I was surprised, man. The hubs were really clean, everything looks really good. And uh, I think for that disc part right there, the uh, dust shield, I'm gonna just try to clean it up and see if all that gunk comes off. Um, if it doesn't, I really don't wanna remove uh, the hub just to unbolt that, so I might just mask it off and just shoot it with a little bit of black spray paint uh, and call it good. But anyway, from here, I'm gonna move on to all other four corners. I'm probably not gonna film a whole lot of this just because it's just the same process over and over again. Um, I might film one of the rears there so you get the idea, but uh, yeah, so let's keep going. So quick update here, it is the following night and last night I was up until about 1 a.m. working on the RSX and I ran into a small hiccup. So over here on the passenger side, rear rotor, I ended up stripping out the rotor screws on accident. So not ideal, but what I ended up doing was just drilling out the head and then after I drilled out the head, the whole rotor was able to come off and then literally, by the grace of God, uh, the rotor screws, or well, what was left of them, were literally able to just be turned out. I just grabbed a pair of pliers and just started rotating. I was able to remove them. So, uh, lucked out. I was able to do that tonight. And then so far tonight, what I've been doing is just cleaning up the calipers more and more. And so my process for this has been kind of weird because what I did is I disassembled the caliper, kind of set it off to the side, took the bracket, deep cleaned the bracket, then put the caliper back onto uh, the assembly here, and then did another cleaning and some more sanding. Uh, uh, this is just to ensure that that paint sticks the best, which, speaking of which, the caliper paint was delayed by one day, and so it did not come in today as expected, which sucks because that means I have to do this tomorrow, making my time frame for this entire weekend much shorter since I'm also planning on installing the coilover. So, kind of shitty, but, you know, car stuff. It is what it is. Uh, so instead, what I've done, I've done some other painting. I've gone ahead and just kind of did a little test spot here on this uh, right, heat shield here for the brake. Uh, this It was looking a little dingy. It wasn't looking that bad. Just a couple spots where a little bit of surface rust was. So I just simply scuffed it up with a scuff pad threw some drop cloth plastic around it, and then just kind of blended in some black, uh, I think caliper spray paint is what I used. And so it looks good. Not as exciting as I was hoping it would be so far, but hopefully tomorrow the calipers will be painted, the new rotors will go in, the new pads will go in, and yeah, brakes will be done on this car and I'll be really excited. So anyway, I'm gonna keep going and I'll chime in as needed. A few moments later. All right, so it is the following, following night, and the G2 caliper paint kit finally got delivered, which means it's time for paint. So at this point in time, all of the dust heat shields have been painted. I went through and sprayed over those, which turned out fantastic, and I got all the calipers mounted back up. I've cleaned these calipers literally 10 times over at this point, but again, I'm removing like 18 years worth of brake dust in order to get this paint to properly. Really stick. So with that said, I got the kit over there. I'll show you what comes in it and then we're going to jump into this. 
All right, so here's what comes with the G2 brake caliper paint system. You're gonna get some non-chlorinated brake cleaner here, a full can, as well as the caliper paint and the color of your choice. Again, I went with gloss black, and then you're gonna get a little bit of reactor here, which I'm assuming is probably some type of hardener of some sort, maybe. And then you're gonna get a brush that's included, not the best brush, but I suppose it'll do the job. And then you're also gonna get a stir stick to mix in the reactor to the paint. You're just gonna pour the whole thing in. And then I opted to use some of my own brushes here, so I picked this up at Hobby Lobby. I think this is gonna be a little bit nicer, as well as some other random brushes I had lying around for uh, the nooks and crannies. Now we're gonna mask off the nipple, as well as the slider pin nut, just to make it look a little bit cleaner. And that's it, guys. So. Really, without further ado, let's just jump into this damn thing. Let's Bob Ross it. Let's paint some happy clouds and make these brakes look brand new again. Alright guys, so quick update here. I just finished up the second coat and this is where this paint really started coming to life. Uh, first coat looked, eh, you know, okay. Then the second coat really started to fill everything in and a lot of that gloss started to pop. Uh, so this is the front caliper here. The rear caliper looks amazing as well. I went a little bit heavier on this one and um, it's kind of hard to tell here. Headlamp, dude, it just looks like glass. It looks really really freaking good. And so I'm gonna do one more coat just because I have the paint. I'm gonna let this set up and dry. It's pretty cold in the garage right now. It's like, I don't know, 60-ish degree. So I guess it's not that cold, but it's cold enough to where it's taken for a little bit longer for it to dry. So one more coat and then we'll call it good.
All right, guys, so I just finished up the third coat and removed the masking tape, and hot damn, this stuff actually works. Color me impressed, or should I say, paint me impressed. But in all seriousness, I think the first coat went okay. I was kind of like, uh, well, we'll see where this goes. Second coat, I was starting to see the light, and I was like, all right, this is looking pretty good. And then that third coat was just the cherry on top, which added all the gloss and really filled everything else in. And so taking a look here, it's gonna be hard to tell on camera, but these do actually have a reflection, a very orange peely reflection, but they are very, very glossy. Really, really good stuff. I'm surprised. I was kind of expecting the worst, so my expectations were low and they were by far exceeded. And so uh, those are the fronts there. Rear here looks really, really good. Very simple, very, very simple. It's not that hard, but at the same time, if you're a very detail-oriented person, I mean, you could sit on this project for like five hours. You could sit there and try to get into every single nook and cranny. I only painted what's gonna be exposed, and I did paint the back of the caliper just because I'm crazy, but I wasn't gonna paint inside here because that doesn't make any sense. That's just gonna get covered. So taking a walk over here to the passenger side, I think the passenger side probably looks a little bit better. I think because I had more practice at that point, but uh, no runs or anything like that. It just, it's nice, deep, dark, and black. Very OEM plus, exactly what I was going for. Uh, in terms of how much paint I have left, surprisingly, I have probably like a little less than half. So that can could do uh, not another set, but maybe close to another set um, or something else in the car if I wanted it to. So if you have big brakes, I can see it being ideal for that, like such as the Brembo's here on the Evo. I could feel like that would be plenty to do everything. Uh, or maybe you want to paint your rotor hub or something else on the car. I'm sure you'd have plenty of paint to do it. So anyways, three coats. Looks pretty damn good. It's not going to dry tonight. I was hoping I was gonna have this project done by this evening and have the rotors back on and all of that, uh, and it's not gonna happen. So this paint is still very tacky. I'm gonna wait till the morning to put the brake pads in, the rotors on, and then we will check out the final results. But I'm pretty happy about that. So, see you guys in the morning. One eternity later. All right guys, so it's the next morning and the paint is much drier today. I wouldn't say it's fully hardened up just yet, but it's definitely better than it was last night. So I think we're gonna go ahead and install the rotors as well as the pads right now. So the process here, I'm gonna pop the hood, take the cap off the brake reservoir and just kind of let it sit there, wrap a towel around it just because we're gonna be compressing fluid and we don't want any of that fluid spilling into the engine bay. From there, it's simply just a matter of taking the caliper off, compressing the piston, in, putting the new rotor on, putting the pads in, and we're done. So this is just gonna be me working. I'm gonna throw on the GoPro and get it done.
All right guys, so I was getting ready to throw in the rear brake pad here and just do a quick test fit, make sure I had the piston compressed as much as I need to. And I pulled the new one out and I thought, huh, that's kind of big, right? And I grabbed the other one and I go, huh, that, uh, that's not gonna work, man. So uh, anyway, that sucks. So apparently I got a different rear set of RSX brake pads than I should have gotten. And so that means we're already this far. I'm gonna go, have to run down to O'Reilly's or AutoZone or something like that and go grab some new rear pads because uh, yeah, that ain't gonna work. guys so the brakes are done and everything is sewn back up the biggest hiccup I had was the pad situation on the rear uh, which wasn't that big of a deal just went down to O'Reilly's and got a new set of OE pads uh, and I'll probably reach back out to Rich at Stop Tech to see if I can get the appropriate Stop Tech uh, pads that I had ordered and so not a big deal but other than that though rears went in just fine replaced all the hardware uh, with the new hardware that came with the O'Reilly's kit which is nice everything looks back to shiny uh, other than that though Rotor screws have been hit with anti-seize, and yeah, I don't know. I mean, that's pretty much a wrap. I think the fronts definitely look the best. I love the way that looks with the slots in there, uh, and the calipers in black just flows really, really well. Very OEM plus. Taking a walk over to the other side here, kind of the same deal. Looks minty fresh. This is gonna look so, so much better once the new wheels get on, it's gonna make a huge, huge difference. So pretty happy guys, I'm not gonna lie. And another thing worth mentioning is that when you're doing brakes, again, make sure to unscrew the reservoir cap there, put a towel around it. By the time I had put the new pads in and compressed the pistons, uh, you could see that the fluid was right there, ready to overflow. So I just grabbed a little syringe, sucked it out, uh, put a little bit of some new stuff back in after I had pumped the brakes a little bit just to get pressure back on them, and that's it. No reason to bleed, no nothing like that, and I'm really happy. So, at this point in time, I'm out of breath. I'm pretty tired. This has been a multiple day long project for no other reason than maybe bad planning. And so, because of that, the car is actually not going back on the ground and we are not bedding in the brakes today because something exciting is happening uh, today, actually, as I'm filming this right now. I'm gonna be filming another video and it's not gonna make sense to put the car back on the ground, and put it back up in the air and all of that. And so uh, I will be betting in the brakes after the coilovers get installed. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully you guys dig the new setup. I will link down anything that I used or anything that I feel is gonna be necessary for this job in the description below. So as always, if you guys enjoy the Acura RSX content and wanna see more, please make sure to give me a big thumbs up. Subscribe down below for more. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Salt Anthony. Peace.